In this video I'm going to make a start on the uh, connecting rod which obviously connects the uh, crankshaft to the piston rod end. For anyone building this model in 5 inch gauge to these drawings this 4 and 11 16 should actually be 4 and 1 16. The shank of the connecting rod is deeper than it is wide so I did a quick card model to get a better idea what it's going to look like. And a quick drawing. So this radius works out at uh, 424 millimeters. So in order to profile turn this on the lathe we need a template that looks something like that. So I've got my uh, piece of material so it's just a case of hacksawing and filing to get that shape. There it is. Oh come on, you did that on the CNC. <laughs> no I didn't. I have the tapes. Okay. So I cheated. Who cares? And there it is, just fits perfect. So this is the cross slide which winds in and out which is what you would normally use to put your cut on and this is your compound slide which you can set at an angle and therefore turn an angle. So for this operation what I have to do is I have to use this cross slide to guide the tool and keep it in line with the digital readout which will become apparent uh, shortly and therefore it would be ideal for me to use the compound slide at 90 degrees so I'll put a cut on with the compound slide and use the cross slide to guide the tool unfortunately this is rather in the way which makes it a bit awkward so I'm just going to set that at an angle and we're not, we're not going to use that it would have been easier if we could have done
Okay, so you can see the idea. The DTI follows the tablet. And what I have to do is move the carriage in or out to keep the uh, needle in one position. So I set this to zero. And as it changes, I have to move the carriage in or out to keep that on zero. And let's follow the profile. So we just need to get it set up. So I'm going to just touch on, reference my cross slide dial to zero. I'm going to back it off one millimeter on diameter. So I'm going to try and take this in two cuts. We'll just check the position of the gauge against the tablet. So I'm going to put that more or less to the end of the radius. In line with the root of the radius. That looks pretty good. Which maybe is about there. Try it on the other side. So I think that's about right. So we're about in the middle there. So we'll set this to zero. It's really handy having this adjustable Noga stand. Just check that position again. That looks good. Okay, so we're one millimetre bigger than the final diameter and the centre of the portion of the conrod. And we'll set it at zero. So we make us go to the beginning of the cut. Just take it slow. The cutting oil. Okay, so feed it in to get back to zero. Engage the feed. So now I'll have to uh, feed the carriage out and the cross slide out to keep that on zero. Starting to cut. I can keep it within one division, it's, that's within one fell. Okay, it's finished that cut on this side. So I'll move it across to the other side. Back up to zero, engage the feed. So now we'll have to feed it in. On the cut. Okay. Back to the centre. So 
this time we'll touch on set this to zero so when I put this radius in here um, I took it down close to the final diameter so it's slightly oversized so this tool uh, may actually take a cut in the root of this radius but um, afterwards I'll just come in with the radius and tool and blend it in okay so here we go feed it into zero so yeah it's going to take a little bit of a cut Engage the feed. Okay, here we go again. Here it's in quite a big cut, but I can't look at it. I've got to keep my eye on the DTI. Do. Ah, doesn't look too bad. So we'll just blend these in with the radius and tool.
So just to recap on the setup. Originally I was intending just using a piece of angle iron with a G-clamp to hold this in place and fitting the tablet to the angle plate. But then I decided just to drill and top the uh, tailstock. And to hold the tablet in place I just turned up a couple of washers and machined a step profile on the underside. So it acts like a clamp. And of course the die test indicator stand has to sit on the cross slide, like so. Okay, so I'm busy setting up to mill this to a uh, quarter of an inch wide, along its full length. Apart from this bit at the end here. So it's quarter of an inch wide up to the shoulder. As you can see the problem we've got is it's too long to hold in the vise. So I've got this end in the vise, the other end I've got uh, held in the V-block, uh, up against an angle plate which is clamped to the table and I'm just securing that on there with the AG clamp. And we just need to check that uh, both ends are the same height. Zero. Zero. Okay, that's them finished now, as far as I can take them. There's still a, a hole to go in here, which I'll have to do on the final assembly. Could do with a little bit more polishing. To get the radius on the end, I just uh, made up a couple of hardened filing discs, which fitted into the hole on each side and I've just filed the radius. Thanks for watching. See you next time.